Years ago, I used to be in sales and I was pretty good at it, but I hated it and didn't even know it. I was actually completely blinded by ambition. And although I used to think of ambition in really glowing terms, after my experience with it, I have a different opinion now. Hey, what's up? I'm Andrea and this is the Booksters Club. We're gonna get into this story a little bit, do some self-development, find something from a book. Let's get into this. that of course there's a healthy place for sales and there are great companies out there that have sales people and there's nothing wrong with that. The company I was in, however, was a little bit different. They were using my family as a ploy to motivate me to really get after more sales. It was 100% commission. So every single day, seven days a week, no days off, I was a beast. Recruiting, training, sales pitches, it was a constant grind. We were getting together as a group, going over Tom Hopkins stuff, going over our scripts. Yes, we had scripts. We knew what you were gonna say and we had an answer for everything. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. And then we moved and everything changed. On moving day, I still actually had appointments and I was still trying to keep those appointments. The problem was I had my hair dryer in one house, my outfit in another house. It was absolutely a mess. And my husband said, hey, for today, just take the day off, take a break. And I was like, no, I can't take a break. I can't take my day off. Because all I could think about was my family. All I could think about was if I take a day off, my family doesn't get to go on that vacation that I'm constantly hearing about. So it was actually really hard for me, but I did it. He convinced me, you can take one day off. You know what happened in that one day off? I completely realized I hated sales. I did. I like nothing about sales. I don't like manipulating people. I don't like using scripts. That really, I don't like that. I don't like going after people either. I would much rather prefer people coming to me out of curiosity because of what I'm doing is good. I believed in the product, but I did not like the methods. The thing here was I was trying to make something happen out of nothing. And I was trying to make something big happen out of nothing. And all of this force and all of this, you know, third chakra stuff, it was really exhausting. And it was pure blind ambition. Blinders were on, nothing else mattered. And it was just ambition, ambition, ambition. It was the making something happen that actually was what was exhausting me. It wasn't the work. I could do the work all day, but it was the making and the forcing. Check out what this book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Dr. Wayne Dyer has to say. It says this verse, which is the 29th verse, speaks of a natural law that's unaffected by ego. The message, you're not in charge. You never have been and you never will be. So you're advised to let go of any idea you have about controlling anything or anyone, including yourself. You know what's funny about that? Ever since I left that company, I've never gone on more family vacations and had a better lifestyle since. There's a quote by Ariana Huffington that says, life is a dance between making it happen and letting it happen. And in this situation, I was definitely making it happen only. What's wrong with making it happen? Sometimes in life, you have to make things happen. But sometimes in life, you have to let things happen. And here's the problem with having blind ambition. When you have blind ambition, you aren't paying attention to any other signs. All you're focused on is the task at hand. And so you may be missing out on some really subtle clues and some really obvious clues that are telling you that what you're invested in, what you're doing, it's not for you. Of course, you can't just sit on the couch all the time and expect everything to happen to you. It is a balance. And it's actually in this present moment that you should be paying attention to because when you're in the present moment, which is another benefit to being in the present moment, when you're in the present moment, it tells you whether or not this, this thing that you're in right now, is a time to make it happen or let it happen. There's definitely some subtle clues to pay attention to. For example, there's a difference between being tired and having physical problems. When it is physically damaging you or it's at your physical detriment, this is a big sign that this is something you are making happen and you are going against the flow, against the grain, and you need to ease up a bit and pay attention because you need to find some moments of letting happen and no more making happen. 
Your time and your resources, of course, you're gonna invest in time and resources. Now, is it balanced? Is it all of your time? Do you have no time for anything else? Is it all of your resources, all of your money, all of your energy is going to this one thing? That's a huge clue that you are not paying attention to this present moment and you are blinded by ambition. And last, how are your relationships doing? Of course, you can't always get everybody on board. Your family sometimes isn't gonna see your vision, but if your important relationships in life are damaged by what you are doing, this is actually a really good sign that you may be headed towards something that is not for your benefit. We can look to our near field, the people we love and trust, to help us and give us subtle clues as to what is working and what is not working. Of course, our inner voice should be the loudest, but we can still use that as a feedback mechanism and a tool. Ambition is great. I definitely learned my lesson when it came to blind ambition though, and I hope this video assisted you in figuring out whether or not you're in blind ambition or just flat out getting after it in life, which there's nothing wrong with that. Consider subscribing to this channel because I read a different book every night. I read until I find something interesting and then I share it here with you. You never know, the next message could be just what you're looking for. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been blinded by ambition before and what you did to get yourself out of that. What snapped you out of it? Until next time, see you later, booksters.